Paul sails for Rome. Sunday School Reference Applications For Sunday, November 13, 2022, of the fall quarter of the Church of God in Christ Legacy Study Series, focus study called, What Does Faith Cost? Unit 3, Lesson 11. Today's Sunday School References application points are based on the Sunday School Lesson Study of the Book of Acts, Chapter 27, Verses 1 and 2, and Verses 33 through 44. Acts 26, 32. And Agrippa said to Festus, We could let this man go free, but he has asked Caesar to hear his case. Acts 27, 1. It was decided that we would sail for Italy. An officer named Julius, who served in the Emperor's army, guarded Paul and some other prisoners. Acts 27, 2. We got on a ship and left. The ship was from the city of Adramidium and was about to sail to different ports in Asia. Aristarchus, a man from the city of Thessalonica in Macedonia, went with us. Acts 27, 10. And said unto them, says, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Acts 27, 11. Nevertheless the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship, more than those things which were spoken by Paul. Acts 27, 13. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing thence, they sailed close by Crete. Acts 27, 14. But not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind, called Jeroclodon. Acts 27, 15. And when the ship was caught, and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. Acts 27, 18. And we being exceedingly tossed with the tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. Acts 27, 20. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. Acts 27, 21. But after long abstinence Paul stood forth in the midst of them, and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me, and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. Acts 27, 22. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. Acts 27, 23. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am, and whom I serve. Acts 27, 24. Saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and, lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Acts 27, 25. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. Acts 27, 27. But when the fourteenth night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adria, about midnight the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country. Acts 27, 29. Then fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern, and wished for the day. Acts 27, 30. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea, under color as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship. Acts 27, 31. Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, Except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Acts 27, 32. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat, and let her fall off. Our lesson today part 2 study scriptures. By faith are we saved today and tomorrow. Without faith we perish because of worry, despair, and anxiety. With a little faith we can move mountains, calm the stormy seas, and yes even overcome the wiles of the adversary. Paul has already assured all of those aboard the ship that no one would perish. Yes they would lose the ship and its cargo to the stormy seas, but no soul would perish. It is important that we note again that faith without works is dead faith, or basically no faith. Since faith is an action you and I take because we believe the word of God, it is necessary that our faith be expressed with simple acts of faith. 
So it was for the 276 souls that were aboard this ship that satanic forces were tossing to and fro to prevent Paul from fulfilling the prophecy of Jesus the Christ, given to him on the Damascus Road. What simple act of faith did the 276 souls aboard the ship take just before dawn, the darkest hours of the night, to prove their faith, in the word of God, that they heard and believed from the lips of Paul? All 276 souls aboard ship participated with Paul by eating thanksgiving bread that Paul had given thanks for and multiplied to feed all of the 276 souls aboard ship. This miracle thanksgiving bread reminds us of the miracle feeding that Jesus did on the mountain top. Acts 27, 33 Just before dawn Paul began persuading all the people to eat something. He said, For the past 14 days you have been waiting and watching, you have not eaten. Acts 27, 34 Now I beg you to eat something, you need it to stay alive, none of you will lose even one hair off your heads. Acts 27 35 After he said this, Paul took some bread and thanked God for it before all of them. He broke off a piece and began eating. Acts 27 36 All the men felt better, they all started eating too. Acts 27 37 There were 276 people on the ship. What is remarkable about this simple act of faith is not only were the 276 souls' spirits lifted out of despair, but their mortal bodies were strengthened too, after they ate the thanksgiving bread, so that they could prepare, for what they could, not see, in the darkest hours of the night, just before the dawning of another day. Acts 27, 38 We ate all we wanted, then we began making the ship lighter by throwing the grain into the sea. Acts 27, 39 When daylight came, the sailors saw land. They did not know what land it was, but they saw a bay with a beach. They wanted to sail the ship to the beach, if they could. Remember Paul had told them that they would lose the ship in the storm. Acts 27, 40 So they cut the ropes to the anchors and left the anchors in the sea. At the same time, they untied the ropes that were holding the rudders. Then they raised the front sail into the wind and sailed toward the beach. Acts 27, 41 But the ship hit a sand bank. The front of the ship stopped there and could not move. Then the big waves began to break the back of the ship to pieces. Once again we see Satan at work entering into the hearts of the soldiers that had participated with Paul in the taking and eating of the thanksgiving bread, that had strengthened them, and persuaded them to take Paul's life, and the lives of the other prisoners on board the doomed ship. Satan does all that he can to prevent souls from being saved by the hearing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Acts 27, 42 The soldiers decided to kill the prisoners so that none of them could swim away and escape. Acts 27, 43. But Julius, the officer, wanted to let Paul live. He did not allow the soldiers to kill the prisoners. Instead he ordered everyone who could swim to jump into the water and swim to land. Once again a little shared faith can work miracles upon the hearts and minds of people that we come in contact with. Frequent contact between Officer Julius and the Apostle Paul made Julius a believer, and persuaded him to trust in the God that Paul had talked about. Officer Julius was not afraid of losing escaping prisoners because Paul had said that they all would be saved, which meant that all souls, prisoners included, would be accounted for when they reached the safety of the kingdom's shores. Acts 27, 44 The rest used wooden boards or pieces of the ship, and this is how all the people made it safely to land. Stay with the ship of faith until you reach the Lord Jesus' kingdom shores, in his haven of rest. Today's Bible Truth God gives peace in the midst of life's storms. Satan has power over the atmosphere and is able to cause great stormy tempests on land and sea to prevent the gospel from being preached and taught to the lost sinful souls of mankind. Today's Bible Truth Sunday School reference scriptures is taken from St. Mark chapter 4, verses 37 through 41. The central theme is that God speaks to our stormy lives and calms our fears, and then provides a way to escape the strong spirits of the adversary Satan. Mark 4 37 
and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. Mark 4 38 And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and there wake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Mark 4 39 And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Mark for 40 And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Mark 4.41 And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Lord on high is mightier than the waves of the sea. The Lord our God is mightier than the storms that come upon our lives. We are the children of faith, born of the Holy Spirit of God, and we are safe and secured under His wings, as we abide in His hands. Psalms 91, 1 he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Satan is an accuser of the brethren. Satan accuses God of being unfair, bias against him, and unjust. Satan seeks to destroy a life, your life and my life. Satan seeks to cause confusion and chaos by disrupting our days and livelihoods. Satan is out to destroy our loved ones who need saving and the people we know and associate with. An example of Satan's power is found in the book of Job chapter 1. Job 1, 1. There was a man in the land of us, whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God, and eschewed evil. Job 1, 2. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. Job's seven sons drank and partied with their three sisters seven days a week. They expected to inherit their father's fortunes, and with no worries and plenty of servants and substance, every day was a party day for them. Job 1, 4 And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. Job loved his party kids, and prayed for them daily, and sacrificed sheep from his herd for each of them daily. Job did not sin by praying for his sinful children, nor did Job sin by making sacrificial offerings for each of them daily in case they had sinned against his God. Job 1, 5 And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned, and curse God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Job 1 13 And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. Job 1 19 And, behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. 1 Peter 5 8 be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Today's memory verse. Acts 27, 44. The rest used wooden boards or pieces of the ship, and this is how all the people made it safely to land. Today's memory verse Sunday school reference scriptures are taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 and 2. Isaiah 43, 1. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. Isaiah 43, 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee, when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Lesson aim. After participating in this lesson, all participants should be able to know how Paul's faith in God enabled him to remain calm in the midst of a storm. Lesson aim. After participating in this lesson, all participants should be able to appreciate how our relationship with God helps us cope in a crisis. Lesson aim. After participating in this lesson, all participants should be able to witness to others about relying on God's strength when facing crises. 
Life need for today's lesson, to remember that the Lord is with us. Bible learning, to realize that our relationship with God helps us cope in times of crisis. Bible application, to rely upon God's strength in crisis. Students' responses, to teach others how to rely upon God. Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven, give us a